coaching the yeah. same damn players not making the tackles because y'all blame players yeah. for dropping the fucking ball. So if it's so if it is yeah. like this one, yeah. they drop the tackles. Yeah. Y'all can say what you want, we know what's really real When them cans come out the tunnel, put you in your field Rep me, you swagged out, trying to build a dynasty Yeah, that's the move, Max, stop, still out here grinding We still trying to win some titles, yeah, we still gotta crush our rivals yeah. We never break, but we might be in all we know is survival I'm thinking we need some recruits, yeah. tell them to go to the U, we make with my just vanished. Good dog. Boy, did you see that? No, everyone. Yeah. I know one day we'll bounce back to that rare status like O2. Cover three, cover four. We got talent, gotta get some more. Take it to the house like number four. And 05, we'll get it back together. EDC is a job. Here. And if you're a fan of the cane, stay down for the ride. We on the line every Christmas. You have dudes like that. You'll be okay. Yo. Yo. What it do? The black? You know me, chilling, 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 chilling. Another day in paradise. Um, got a lot to talk about today, don't we, Black? Oh yeah, man. You know we all we always got things to chop it up about, so it's all good. Yes, sir. So, um, NFL draft. Um, non. Yeah, yeah. My man Derek Stanley went top corner like he's supposed to you know he's supposed to be the top dog off the board yes indeed but go ahead we, we're not here to talk about any lsu people but i gotta give props to the best, nah, DB, I the mean, best could, db in the in the country yeah we could talk a little bit about it i mean you know you being a ravens fan how do you feel the ravens drafted in the draft um i feel great man except for i wish we would have got a receiver but Watching a lot of the undrafted free agent receivers that we picked up that were actually very good players at their respective schools, I kind of feel good that a couple of them will make the team and can, can, can contribute. But as far as the defensive side, I mean, you got to love what they did. Getting starters, getting depth, just getting back to that, that trench bully style of defense we've had. Uh, I think the steal is going to be David Ajobo. You know, I think he was the best pass rusher on the Michigan team. I personally feel he's better than Aiden Hutchinson. Um, I think he bring, he has a higher ceiling. He brings more to the table. So, I, I, man, I, look, you get a first-round pick in the second round of work where we got him, bruh, a steal. And it's a seamless transition for him, right? He's going to be playing in the same defense, of course, with an added – with a few added kinks and stuff, but got the he got the same D coordinator from Michigan is going to be the DC in Baltimore, so it's a win win. You know what I'm saying? It's a win win. Yep. No, nah, I mean we're not going to talk a lot about it, but I felt like my Chargers did a pretty good job. They got the best guard in the draft. Um, oh, they did. Got got to protect Mr. Herbert, um, and uh, they 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 stole your favorite running back or your second favorite running back, Isaiah Spiller from Texas A&M in like the fourth round. Right. Make, make I, that, I, make that make sense. He's like a second round running back. Right. So um, there's one question I do or not question. But there's one thing I wanted to get to before we kind of get started on the, on the cane stuff. And this right. is from our guy, Fernando, uh, Fernando, uh, Tennessee, making some big splashes and getting some big time players. So, I know you're probably referring to Brew McCoy, who just committed to Tennessee. I was just having this conversation with some people in the paid chat about Brew McCoy. I think he has high upside, but I'm very uh, curious as to see how he does. Um, a little backstory on him. He committed to USC, was an early enrollee, spent 17 days only at USC, <laughs> then transferred to Tennessee, or not Tennessee, Texas, practiced with them during spring, and then immediately left and transferred then back transferred to USC, to gets to USC, plays a year, and then gets arrested for domestic violence and gets basically kicked off the team. He was suspended and de indefinitely never got reinstated to the program. And now he's back to – now, he, now he's going to Tennessee. So I'm not um, – <laughs> They they are making some big moves. Um, they're they're doing well in the recruiting aspect, uh, but uh, I, I'm a wait and see with Brew McCoy. He's got a 
he's got to make sure that he takes care of what he needs to take care of for him to, to do anything at the, at the college level. Um, Facts. so, uh, it, it, very interesting, uh, story on Brew McCoy. Uh, so now we'll talk a little bit about the draft for the Canes. It, uh, wasn't the best. Um, no, I think it was one of the worst. Yeah. So <laughs> Hey black, I, I want you to, I want you to be a witness. Did I, or did I not tell you John Ford was going to get drafted? Yeah, we did. We, I mean, we did. You did. You told me that. And I agreed. I said, you know, he's 6'5", 300. You know, it's always that one guy, that one coach to say, I can do something with him. I can get him to to play at a respectable caliber. But so, yeah, you did, you did mention that. Just, you, just- you said he was going to get drafted before anybody. You said yeah. he'd be the, you said he would be the first Kane drafted. I did say that and he ended up being the only Kane drafted. So, uh I feel good about that. L- listen, last year I said Rashawn Slater was going to be the best tackle in the draft. Everybody called me crazy because they thought Panay Sewell would be the best and uh Rashawn Slater made the pro bowl as a rookie. So, uh I don't know. When it comes to that draft stuff, I I I do a lot of research on the draft. I'm like a draft junkie. Um, I start doing mock drafts like for next year, probably now, like (laughs) I just love the draft. So uh, that's definitely, (laughs) you go ahead. Speaking of mock drafts, we did a mock draft. I think, what was it the day of the draft or the day before? Probably both. I think think we did one the day before, right? Did we do one the day before? And like, I had two picks that I picked that were in that actually the Ravens actually picked, which was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that was awesome. Um, I had, I think, zero correct pick. Actually, I had one. I had the safety from Baylor to the Chargers. That was the only right. one. Um, so, uh, yeah, not not the best draft for the Canes. We'll kind of go through what ended up happening. Um just in case, you know, it, it is a little bit tough sometimes to follow the undrafted free agent pool. Um, there's there's just not a ton of, of, of noise out there um, regarding that. So we'll start off with John Ford. Obviously, he gets drafted by the Packers in the sixth round, I believe. Um, where do you see, like, where do you see him year one with the um, Packers? Because I, I know where I see him. I mean, year one? I mean, definitely, I think he'll make the roster, you know what I mean, or he'll make the practice squad. I think, they, I think they're I think they envisioning him being more how, oh, God. What's the guy's name? It's on the tip of my tongue. He was from Boston College. He was a zero technique, the nose guard. Uh, Bijan Bell or something like that. How, how long ago are we talking? Uh, maybe like four or five years ago. Is he still in the league? I don't think so. But he was nice. I can I can see him. I can see them trying to get him to play that role in the middle. You know, take on double teams. You know what I'm saying to free up the backers. But his first year, I see developmental learning, developing. You know, because he's still raw. Um, I see him on the practice squad. I'm not sure if he make the 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 active roster right away. But, you know, maybe later on in the season, they'll bring them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, it, it depends. Um, to me, I think right now he's probably the third most talented nose tackle. Uh, they, they really don't have a, a ton. Um, so I, I would say he's probably nose tackle three right now. So it, it just becomes how many nose tackles are gonna, they going to keep on the roster and how many are they going to move to the practice squad. Right. Um, there it is, yeah. B, uh, BJ Rajay, yeah. Yeah, he, he's been out the league for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, um, he, he was nice. He was yeah, nice. Yeah, so so I actually think Ford does have a ch- uh, a good chance at making the roster. Um, he'll hundred percent be on the practice squad. Um, I was obviously not impressed with. Uh, I know what you're laughing at. <laughs> That's a uh, fact, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Obviously wasn't impressed with what he did at the University of Miami, but again, he has the size that you can't teach. He's 6'5", 330 pounds. Um, you can't teach that, so he's probably going to make the roster just based off of that. Right. Um, and, and he's a hard worker. You know, Don't discredit that. He completely f- 
molded his body when he was here. So um, that's a guy I think is going to make the roster. I did want to get to one other comment here. Kane's got screwed. I actually don't think they did. I know everybody's like how that, I mean, realistically, what Kane other than, I mean, I'm going to say it. most Kane fans didn't think Ford was getting drafted. So what Canes do you think deserve to get drafted? Because Bubba's tape was one of the worst safety tape if you watch it this past season and and the second half of last season he was undraftable and rambo had production this year but still had his drop issues that he had at oklahoma and has doesn't have size doesn't have athleticism he tested poorly at the combine tested poorly at his pro day um actually he might not even have been at the combine well regardless tested poorly at his pro day you know, isn't isn't six four, but he plays like he's a big receiver. Um, and he and he didn't have a high vert, just didn't test well at all. Um, you know, didn't run fast in the forty, ran like a four five. So I wasn't surprised he didn't get drafted because at the end of the day, he's not. You look at guys that got drafted ahead of him with less production. That's because they run four three, they run four four. I mean, Tyquan Thornton. Ran a 4-2. Four two. Why do you think he got drafted in the second round? You know what I mean? So it's, yeah, the production's there, but they don't care. Once you get to, like, the fourth round, they're not drafting based off production. They're drafting based off of potential. And potential. unfortunately, his potential isn't that high. He, and he's the best player on the board for that team. Yeah. he. You know, he's kind of capped off. I'm not going to say he can't get better, but um, he just doesn't have – what a lot of these teams are looking for, unfortunately. So I didn't think it was, I, I didn't think it was unfair. I didn't think, it, you know, I expected him maybe to be a six round pick at best. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're a six or seventh round team, you're better off going undrafted because then you get to pick the situation that you're in. Um, yep. And and that's something that, that a lot of people don't take into account. You get to basically, if you're good and you're undrafted, you get to pick wherever you want to go. Every team's going to want you as an undrafted free agent. You get to look at the depth chart and pick where you want to go. So we're going to get to that in just a second here because the next guy I have on my list is Navon Donaldson. Got picked up by the New York Giants. And they're a I team. Think that's a, I think that's a good spot for him. Yeah, they're a team that has not a lot of great guards. Yeah, they need he's offensive linemen. Yeah, he, he's a guy that can make that too deep as a rookie. Um, obviously needs to show improvement because he had a, 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 a poor last season, a, a up and down last season. Um, but a guy that doesn't have a ton of competition on that team. Um, so again, he got to pick his spot. He got to pick where he wanted to go. He p- picked a great spot. Um, a place that doesn't have a lot of guys on that depth chart as far as guards go. Um, how, how do you feel about the, the Giants for Navon? No, like I said, the Giants need O line help. You know what I'm saying? They need O line help. You know, they don't have many guards. So it's a great opportunity for him to go in and make a name for himself and get on that too deep and be a travel guard. You know what I'm saying? And be a swing left or right guard. You know what I'm saying? And he can play tackle and set. He's played center too. He can exactly play all five positions on the line. Every team has that fifth offensive lineman or sixth offensive lineman. They call it a swing O lineman that can play every position on the O-line, right? Yep. And Navon can do that, but we know he's better suited at guard. So now with this opportunity, Navon has to has to seize the seize this opportunity, get in the best shape that he's ever been in. He has to reach get in better the best shape he's been in now because this is a job. You know, there are no more redos. There are no more do-overs. You know what I'm saying? You ain't getting the extra COVID yet. It's yo you you ball you make the roster you don't you're cut simple you know what I'm saying it, it's simple as that and every team covered his lineman every team covered covered his lineman and I think he can make this active roster if he comes in with the right state of mind yeah. but I like the Giants for him I do and we got our guy Buff McCoy saying he got the he got uh well he didn't get drafted mike he got signed for the same reason that that four did potential he's huge uh, uh agree um and and he had really solid tape early in his career i mean he was a freshman all-american right so you know the giants are hoping that he can recapture some of that stuff um so i i guess we talked a lot about rambo but we didn't talk about where we see him with the team 
Um, where where do you kind of see Rambo with the Panthers? Because that's a team to me. They need receiver help too. They they need yeah. outside receivers. Yeah. The only the only thing I'm wary about is typically when you're like wide receiver three through six on a team, you've got to be a special teamer. And he didn't t- do a ton of special teams here, so he's got to he's got to prove that he can be a special teamer. I think if he wants to make the roster, um, because they did bring in, I believe Andre Roberts, who is a, is a, one of the best special teamers in the league, um, to be the return guy. Um, so he's going to be com- competing with that uh, as well. Um, so I I think he can make the team if he can prove he can play some special teams. Um, but I, I do think he ends up making that roster. Yeah, I think he'll make the roster, and I think he needs to some way figure out how to be more versatile mm-hmm. and play some inside as well, give them a little slot if he can do so. Um, outside is where he's going to make his bread and butter, but in this day and age, you know, sometimes you want to be able to cross-train and work in and outside um, and just work on his craft, you know what I'm saying? Like a 4-5, or five, it's not bad, right? It, it's, no. it's not bad, but when you're comparing it, to everybody else in the combine that was that was dropping four threes like war dropping four threes like Davis's mom on a hot night. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just not a good look. I mean, but he ran a four five five. That's that's good. You know what I mean? I'm not comparing them to who I'm about to say, but Mike Irvin was a four five guy, maybe right four high four 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 five. Jerry Rice was a four five guy, four six, right? So you know. Not comparing to either one of them, just I'm comparing the speed aspect. You know, if he becomes a better route runner and and and, and more reliable with his hands, I think he'll have a serviceable, uh, serviceable career uh, in the league with the Panthers because they need receivers. They yep. do. I agree. They need a quarterback too. But So uh, <laughs> staying on the receiver, um, Mike Harley, you know, got picked up by the Cleveland Browns. Where where do you see him playing a role? Because that's a guy that can play special teams. Yeah, Mike Harley could play special teams, so he could definitely make it uh, contribute as a special teamer. But they need a slot because Jarvis Landry is a free agent, and Jarvis Landry was working the slot a lot with when Odell was there. So they need a slot a slot guy. I, I think I think Mike Harley can do well. Um, is he gonna make the team? I think he'll make the practice squad starting off, but he brings value added value because he can play special teams. So if he could play special teams, you never know. He may squeeze in and, and make the 53 man roster because he can do special teams. He could be run down on kickoffs. He could be kick, play kickoff return, you know, even punts and stuff like that. So, you know, he has, he has value. He, ha- he has value, not just as a, a receiver, a pass catcher, but he could play special teams as well. You know, and, and it sucks that we got to talk about cats who didn't get drafted, you know, but that goes to show you, like, the talent, the talent evaluation that was done here previously was some caca. Yeah. In, my, in, in the words of Flo, some caca. <laughs> Damn, but I said basudo, bro. It was basudo. <laughs> <laughs> we got you speaking Spanish tonight, Black. Um, Harley, to me, it, it, again, it's going to depend on how many slots they keep on the 53. Because right now I have him as as – wide receiver three in the slot. They drafted David Bell from Purdue. He's probably going to start there in the slot for them. And then they they picked up Jakeem Grant from the Dolphins. So those guys are 100% ahead of him. Of course. Um, you know, 100% ahead of him. It just depends on if they're going to keep three slots on the on the 53 or not. If not, he'll be on the pra- practice squad. I'm fairly confident in that. Uh, fortunately for him, the other receivers that they picked up are, are, are outside guys. Um so he doesn't have a ton of competition as far as rookies go in the slot, other than, you know, David Bell, who they drafted. Um, but I, I think he has a chance to make the team. Um, just, again, just depends on Jakeem Grant. Jakeem Grant was on the the Bears or the Dolphins for like 87 years. <laughs> but yeah, he, he, he was with Chicago, right? How long was he with Chicago? Wasn't he just with Chicago last year? I, I think st- so. he's, st- hey, he's still offending me, Jazz. He's still offending me, dog. Um, but yeah, I think he can. He'll he'll hundred percent make practice squad, whether he he is on a fifty three or. Hey, maybe. Jazz, how about them Yankees? <laughs> yeah, facts out here killing it. 
out here killing it. Um, so then, you know, going on to Bubba, didn't have great tape, gets picked up by the Seahawks, which I think is a is an awesome fit for them. Oh, great um, fit for Bubba. <laughs> they love they love speed in the secondary. He definitely has that. Um, and they are hey. very. Go ahead. He, look, he doesn't have to learn. He doesn't have to learn how to tackle. That's what many. That's what the other coach was teaching him. It's the Seattle way of tackling. So let hey, the league in, let the league and miss tackles. Yeah, exactly. Fits right. It fits in perfect. But no, all seriousness though, I think him hurting his shoulder, um, not last year but the year before. I think that kind of messed him up because he was playing well up until that point. Then you just seen he wasn't aggressive. He wasn't trying to. He he wasn't he wasn't trying to get part of that. No no parts of that work. None of that action. And I think it just lingered on into this past season, man. Um, but piggybacking off what you just said, I, I I think Seattle was the perfect landing spot for him for his for his, you know the type of you know type of game he plays. And he gets to learn from Jamal Jamal Adams, right? Yeah. He gets to learn from he gets to learn from Jamal Adams, one of the best safeties in the league. So it, it was it, it, linebackers in the league, right? Strong <laughs> safeties. Yeah, you know he's, he's pretty yeah. much a linebacker. He's always in the box, but right. Um, no, to me, I think it's it, like like we both mentioned. It's a perfect fit. They're very thin at safety. They got I think uh, they still have Quandre Diggs. I literally just was looking at their depth chart. Um, I know they have Jamal Adams. Yeah, they got Quandre uh, Diggs. So they don't really have anybody else behind them. Um, he's got an opportunity to potentially make the two deep as a freshman. R- rookie, why did I say freshman? Um, <laughs> the, 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 the outlier is if they're going to convert Kobe Bryant from Cincinnati to a safety. Right. Uh, because he's got a lot of safety skills um, in the NFL compared to college. I think he's more of a safety in the league. So um, it's going to be interesting. I think he has a chance to make the two deep right away though. Um, so hopefully that is the case. Uh, a guy that I, I don't think is going to make a roster, uh, unfortunately is Derek King um, with the new new England Patriots. They are loaded um, at quarterback wide receiver and running back the three positions that he's going to be you basically trying out for. Right. Um, they've got like three quarter, they just dropped, they drafted a quarterback. They got Mac Jones and they have Brian Hoyer and Jared Stidham already exactly. at quarterback. He's not, it's just not going to happen there. They got Thornton um, up there. They got Thornton. They just drafted the four, two guy. Yeah. <laughs> they got a ton of wide receivers on that team. Uh, a ton of them. And they're, they're like four deep at running back. So, um, to me, I think he's a practice squad candidate. Um, just, just. Not the best situation as far as uh, depth charts go. Um, right. So, so I think that's unfortunate. Um, another one that's a little bit unfortunate is, is Zach McLeod to the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, again, they're very, very deep at off, outside linebacker and edge. Um, so, a, a guy that I think is, is probably immediately a practice squad candidate. What about you, Black? No, I definitely, I believe, I believe so as well. But I mean, hey, look, man. You on the practice squad. You 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 straight. You in the league. Keep grinding, and you never know. Injuries happen. You know what I mean. And mm-hmm. Look at Baltimore. Look at my team last year. We lost like eighty players before we played the first regular season game, and we had to promote people from within. So you know he can get promoted. You know, and um, from the practice squad on Minnesota, I think it's I think it's a good look for him. New mm-hmm. coaching staff. So, you know, new eyes, everybody starting from, you know, square, square one, you know, so I, I hope nothing but the, was nothing but the best for all these young men, you know, for all these young men, you know, they canes, you know, so at the end of the day, they all canes and hopefully, hopefully they all get busy. Yep. Um, a, a guy that I, there's, there's three guys, the last three guys that I think have a, have a really big shot of making the roster. Uh, one of them is Jared Williams with the Philadelphia Eagles. They have a big question mark at backup right tackle. Uh, Lane Johnson is probably going to retire at any point. He's yeah, super he's, old. He, he keeps getting hurt. He's on his uh, last leg, man. <laughs> so I think that's a really good uh, fit for Jared Williams. They're not loaded at all at tackle. Um, they drafted Andre Dillard two years ago. He's been terrible. 
Um, he's the backup left tackle, so I think he actually has a mm-hmm. chance of making the roster there. So yeah, they, 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 that was they, that, that was one of their weak spots. They right tackle the right side of their line was kind of iffy last year, especially tackle. Yeah. So you know he he does have a great opportunity to make the two deep um, active day roster. And the dude Dylan is that to say is that the left tackle from Washington State? Uh, Andre Dillard. Yeah, is that him? Andre uh, Dillard from Washington State. Yeah, correct. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't really panned out too well. So I mean, it's a great opportunity for him. It's a perfect team that he that that he chose to go to. You know, and it's about doing your due diligence and whoever you got representing you doing their homework to find the best lay in the spot for you for teams that are offensive uh, line needy. And him and uh, Navon. You know, I think they picked two of the right spots to go to to potentially, you know, have a great shot at make, making those squads. Yep. We got uh, Adam Atlas. Do you think Navon has a chance at all with the Giants? We But we talked about him a little bit earlier, 100%. Um, they're very thin at, at guard, so I think he does have a, have a chance to make that roster. So another guy that I – it's crazy. Another guy that I think that has a really high chance of making the roster is Amari Carter um, with the Bears. How do you feel about Amari with the Bears? Depends on where they're gonna play him. If they playing him back deep, then uh if they play him close to the line of scrimmage like Jamal Adams, then yeah. They but you know what they may they may make him a linebacker. They may have tell him like safety Thank would you. not be safety would not be near your name. LB would be if by your name. And I think him playing close to the line of scrimmage, playing linebacker, I think he will do very well. Because he, we already know he's a striker. We already know he likes to hit. Yeah. We already know that. We already know he's aggressive. We already, we already know he can blitz. You know what I'm saying? So I think, the, I think he would do very well playing for the monsters of the midway. You know, that's that's for you know for the cats my age. They they know who the monsters of the midway was when they, when they said that. But I think he'll do well playing for the Bears. I think he actually got an opportunity to make that 53 man roster. Yeah, I think he's 100% going to make the 53. He's going to be a monster on special teams, laying the wood. He's going to be a gunner, probably. Um, and then they're very thin at inside linebacker and very thin at strong safety. So I think they have. he's got a massive opportunity. He's in the perfect fit for him. And are they uh, and are they, are they they um, converting from a 3-4 to a 4-3, or are they staying with the 4-3? I mean, I mean the 3-4, the 3-4. Uh, they ran the 3-4 last year. But they got a new coaching staff, so I'm wondering if they're gonna go to a four three. So I think they're staying in a three four because I believe Matt Ellerbus from um, the Colts ran a four uh, three four as well. Gotcha. Colts. So um, I think they're staying in a four uh, three four. I think it's an awesome fit for him. And then last shout out, I know he's wasn't on the team last year, but our guy Scott Patchen, after 18 years in college, yeah, shout out to Scott. Got picked up by the Colts. Another guy I think has the potential to make the roster. Um, they got a lot of room at defensive tackle. I think they probably put him in there on pass rushing downs. Um, so I think he has a chance to make that roster. So that that's the draft. It sucked. Had to talk about it. Um, hopefully. The draft was Basudo, bro. It was Basudo. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, there's an, uh, we, we turn a page with the new staff and um, – we have like 10 guys drafted next year and get back to the old ways. I think that would be awesome. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it was it was a rough one. It was a rough one. But uh, we, we keep it moving, Black. Hey, look, we could have been Texas. Texas didn't have a player drafted at all. <laughs> that, that is very true. Uh, we got this weird guy in the chat. I don't know what he's doing here. Yeah, what, 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 what is he doing here? Yeah, I don't even know, dude. Yo, go make some donuts. <laughs> make some donuts. Yeah, you remember that donut commercial time to make the donuts? What's funny is uh I don't think he can eat donuts no more, bro. Oh, for real? Why? There I heard there was a challenge. What's so, the challenge? Wait, we're not gonna get into the challenge, but uh I heard there was a challenge. So okay. um I don't think Flo's gonna be eating donuts any uh anytime soon. Mm. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hey, look, I didn't even know anything about that. I just said that, but didn't know nothing about any donuts. Okay. (laughs) So there's one piece of recruiting outside of the transfer portal that I want to talk about today. 
Just one piece. We signed Davis's mom to an NIL deal. <laughs> that was last week, but I know, but they didn't know about it, so I wanted to tell uh, them. I, I signed the check too. Yeah. Yeah. Um before we get to the the one thing I want to recover <laughs> cover recruiting, we got our guy Ian for the A Black Double Backflip Fund. <laughs> I got y'all again one day. Yes, he does. Uh, see, Cliff knows. <laughs> um, so, there's one player I want to talk about that's a high school recruit. A lot of conversations about him yesterday. I just wanted to touch base. Um, I, I just, I just have to. Um, so we're gonna do that, Black. We're gonna do that. It's a it's a big controversy here, um, I guess, from the fan base. Uh, that's that's Emery Williams. He's a quarterback out of Florida. Um, he's about six four, maybe even six five. Um, really, really, really good football player. His tape wow. is insane. His release is like perfect. Wow. Um, a What's lot cool? of sim- up north. Okay. Um, I don't okay. know what high school. I can look it up. Emory Williams. Um, follows me on Twitter, by the way. So we're pretty much best friends. Uh, he attends Milton Milton High School up north. Uh, okay. Anyways, he's really, really good. Uh, I've talked to Roman, who, as everybody in this chat knows, is a quarterback guru. He played quarterback for St. Thomas Aquinas. Could have played at the next level, but did something, played another sport at the next, next level instead. Um, And I've spoken to other guys that have played quarterback in college and they are like, why is this kid not getting recruited by everybody? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why black. And you know why too. It's because he doesn't do camps. Oh, okay. He's not at all these camps. He's not at all these massive seven on seven events. That's why he's not being extremely extremely highly recruited but frank ponce found him yeah, um, frank, yeah. and uh, i think we have a really good shot at, at at pulling him i think he would probably be if when it's all said and done if he is a part of this class um and and we're going over the most underrated recruit in the class it could be him okay. i don't i don't see him staying this low ranked throughout his senior year I believe he got invited to um, some Elite 11 event. So if he attends that, which is exactly what happened with TVD, he attended one of those events, boom, became a high four star. Right. That That is the trajectory I see for him. He is really, really solid, like really solid. I have him personally as a high four star right now. Um, he's very, very good. So just wanted to touch base on that. Um, it's just... There's context matters. He's not. He's not. A, he's not a camp guy. He's not going to be highly rated. That's just what happens, unfortunately. Right. And, and speaking like camps, I was watching this thing. You know, something that Edrin James was saying. You know, the great Edrin. He was saying. You know, a lot of times. You know, these camps are. He said these camps are a farce because when you go, the camp instructors or the coaches, they already got their picks, right? They already got their picks. Who they want? Who they like? And you know. The, the reps aren't distributed equally. So one person may get one or two reps and another person may get all the other reps. He said, is mm-hmm. is he said, you know, he said, if you can play, school's gonna find you. Coaches will find you if you can play. You know what I mean? And, and I and I agree with him. If you can ball, they're gonna find you. Takes one school. That's it. Takes one school. Takes one school, and we all know when it's when Miami's that one school and we offer. Everybody else is going. Excuse me, is going to offer that young man. Yeah, it, it it always happens to us. Yep. So, and and one thing to note about his recruitment, he wants to commit by the end of the month. So I believe he's got some visits coming up. I know he's going to be at Miami this month, um, and uh, he's going to commit soon. Not saying it's going to be to Miami. I think we have a really solid chance. He's like I listen. Tape does not lie. Numbers do. Okay, yeah. so when you're when you're analyzing a recruit, watch his tape, see see what he does, take a look at the competition. Um, sometimes, if you're not playing in a high competition area, 
um, you're going to fly under the radar a little bit as well, just because of, of that. Like Landon Ibieta, everybody, why was he good enough to commit to LSU and Miami and get recruited by Nick Saban, who wanted to flip him from Miami if he wasn't good? But he was a one of the lowest three stars in the country. I think he was like not even in the top 1,000 players in the country. But LSU and Miami and Alabama wanted him. So pay attention to that kind of stuff too. So that's that's my rant on Emory Williams. Um, keep keep an eye out on him. I think he's a really solid player. So uh, and he's got prototypical size. The you know eye I mean? look, the eye in the sky never lies. Facts never lies. <laughs> so going to the portal, Black wanted to discuss the guys that are in the portal currently and some of the guys that left our team that are in the portal currently as well or find um find new spots right so a brand new entry like right before the show christian williams he's a nose tackle that played at oregon um not sure where he was on the depth chart but just kind of wanted to, to note him he's brand new in the portal I have no idea if we have any interest um but just kind of wanted to make a note of that black this is your guy jordan addison everybody wants to talk about it apparently texas just offered him five million dollars in nil um, I think that's ridiculous, personally. I get um, the market is whatever somebody's willing to pay. That is a fact. I'm if still anyone... trying to figure out how he won the Belifikov Award. I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to figure that out. Not saying he's not nice, but best receiver in the country, nice. No, sorry. I'm just. Yeah, he, he had crazy stats. Yeah, but... I, I, get, I get it. But what we say, sometimes stats lie. I know. I know. Like. A lot, not, of bubble, a lot of bubble screens. Uh, trust me, I know. It, it, you know, it's, it's about three receivers. I'm not taking them over. But that that doesn't mean he's not good, right? It doesn't mean he's not good. Just I don't think he's Belitnikov good. I right? agree. My, my concern is, let's just say we get him for a year. We pay him. That number is five million. Let's just say we pay him a million or two million dollars. Right. To me, what message does that send to everybody on our roster? And I, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned with hurting feelings in the wide receiver room. I'm concerned about we've got a potential number one pick in the draft, TVD at quarterback, not making that kind of money. So I, I, I just think it's it's a slippery slope when you're talking about paying more money for somebody than anybody on your team's making. Um, it's what? just. I but don't you think know, it's I guess it's like even like in the league, right? When you get to the league and you bring in free agents, right? And you bring in a free agent that may sign. Like say you bring in a um you bring in a free agent and they sign the richest deal in history at their position, right? So now they like the highest paid person on that team. But their productivity warrants that money. So like just just I'm flipping the coin over. Just flipping the other side of the coin. So he comes is like, "Yo, look at my stats. Look what I did at Pitt." You know what I'm saying? Like, "Yo, I'm coming to hear TVD, man. You do this thing, you bona fide. You see what I did for you see what I did for uh 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 picket. Like, yeah, that could be you. You got a stronger arm, you got this, it's a better team. Boom. So, I mean, but I can see the other side too, Max, where it's like, like, dude, you ain't even been here. Like, how you get paid more than me? Like, what's yeah. up with that? Uh, to to me, it's the distinction between technically they're pros now because they're getting paid right but i still have that slash amateur status on these college athletes i think when you get to the nfl th this nil stuff is so new that the whole team isn't used to it right but right. in the league like that's just what it is people get paid like that that's how it's always been you you have to be understanding um so that that's kind of where I am. I would love for him to be here. Uh, he's one of the best receivers in the country. I think he would help us out greatly. Oh, thanks. Um, but it's a battle between us, Bama, Texas, USC, See. anybody that wants a receiver. Ev any team probably wants him. So it's it's going to be a battle. Not sure where we stand. <laughs> yeah, with that. I mean, I mean, Davis's mom. She likes receiving. 
<laughs> she does. Maybe we can just pick her up again. Um, but other receivers uh, that are in the portal, Matt Landers just at the portal. He's a wide receiver that was at Georgia for a couple of years, uh, then transferred over to Toledo. He's 6'5", weighs about 200 pounds, and he runs a 4'4". You know, I like a, that. He's uh, a deep threat with a lot of speed, very inconsistent quarterback play at Toledo. Um, so... That's a guy I I really like. I know that's we a, talked that, about that, him before the show. He could yeah. be a potential game changer. Uh, not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how much the staff is interested in him. Not sure if they've even made contact yet. Um, but I think he he would be a, a solid addition to the team. What about you, Black? That's a guy from day one. He's automatically the X. Six five two two or some chains four four. He's automatically out the out the outside receiver. And it's a mismatch. It's, it's it's a matchup problem already. And if you go watch his tape, you know he gets open. He just like Max said, very very inconsistent uh, QB play. You know that's a guy that we need in this room. You know we need a guy like that in the room that can help and teach everybody else and everybody grow together because he may be one and done, right? So you know you get the most out of him while he's here, like a KJ Osborne situation. And everybody learned under him. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not concerned about feelings. You know what I'm saying? Because if they feelings, if they worried about their feelings, then they should have done what they had to do to take care so they don't have to go into the portal to bring somebody in here. Like I've always said, you can't get upset with the results that you don't get from the work that you don't do. Period. You know what I'm saying? If you was doing yeah. the work, we not need to bring no transfer receiver up in here. But we need one. So... Whatever's going to make the team better, you know me, Max, I'm all about stocking as much ta- stacking as much talent at each position as possible and let them dudes go out there in green tree and duke it out. Whoever made the best man win, period. I, I definitely agree. Uh, another receiver to note is Javion or J.J. Hester uh, from Missouri, played in the SEC. He's 6'3", got really good speed, um, had about 19 yards of catch last year for Missouri. Um, he's a, he's a big play threat, has really good film for the limited snaps, snaps he played, but he has really, really solid tape, really solid tape. Um, I think he would be a a massive addition as well. Um, I don't know if you've watched any Missouri games last year, but that guy, that guy popped off tape. Uh, he wore number 13, I believe for them last year. So I watched watched a few of the games. Um, I got a question though. So if you was if you was to take a, a educated guess, how many receivers you think we bring in here? One or two? Or no, no. How many receivers you do you think we need to bring in here? One or two? I think we sh- I think we need to bring in one. I think we would like to bring in two. Got you. Got you. Um so in the we- chat we got two, one, one, two. One. One. Yeah. I, I, I think Hester would be a, a massive get. Um, he's really, really solid. Um, and then the last receiver that we'll talk about is Rico Powers, a guy that ha- – just go watch his high school tape. Hasn't done much in South Carolina. Didn't have a quarterback either. Didn't play a ton. He's 6'2", about 190, 195, maybe even 200 at this point. Um might not be a guy that that'll start day one just because he doesn't have any production yet. But I'm I'm telling you, Black, go watch his high school tape. The kid, the kid's got the goods. Where's he um, from? He he played at South Carolina. He's from I believe. Um, where is he from? I th- I think he's from Georgia. Okay. Um, so really good. Um, I, I think he'd be a big addition to the team as well. Uh, we need some size, man. I mean, think about this. The guys that we've listed off. Rico Powers is about 6'2". Landers from Toledo and Georgia is 6'5". Javion Hester is 6'3". Um, th- that, those are the guys that, that I'm looking at right now. They all have size. Um, yeah. So so I think that's another guy to kind of keep your eye on uh, as a potential, potential fit for us. Um, and then <laughs> the big position that everybody wants to talk about is linebacker. You got. Um, I'm gonna butcher his name, so I'm just gonna say his last name. Crouch from ten from Tennessee, 
was recruited by Andrew Rogers over to Michigan State last year. Do you know who uh, Andrew Rogers works for, Black? I think he works for a team of Coral Gables. I, I believe so. So the guy that recruited him is on our staff, right? Yeah, so, I mean, so it's almost like a no-brainer. Don't you think that some type of – that maybe some contact will be made if not – if if it hasn't been made already? Yeah, and, and a little bit more about him, right? He missed three games last year. Guess how many tackles he had? What, like 75? Literally 75. Damn, I'm nice. <laughs> nice! He literally right, had 75. Been, right! Always bet on black. <laughs> 75 tackles he missed three games that would have led yeah. our team that would have led our team in tackles last year even without him playing in three games yes it would have <laughs> and that's a shame like 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 yo just like i i want y'all out here in kane's world and just think about we're talking about the university of miami and we're talking about all the great linebackers we've had and we we and and we would say a person who had 75 tackles would have would be more than we've had altogether. Let that sink in. And he missed three games. And he missed three games. Let, let that sink in. We're talking about the University of Miami that was once known as linebacker U. And we can't get three, ta- three linebackers to have more than 75 tackles. Yes, and to answer the question in the chat, uh, right, first the fat boys break up, now nah, this. <laughs> right here, Corey Flag had sixty, and Wayman Steed had fifty-five. Fifty seventy-five tackles is low, not really in college. Um, I, I wouldn't say that's low, but again, he missed three games, so yeah, he would have hit, hit over a hundred if he had played in those games, which is extreme. There's not many college linebackers college players in general that have a hundred tackles. Remember there's, there's less games than in the NFL. Yeah. He missed three games. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, f- the dude... f- f- find me more than 10 in all of call uh, in all of power five that have, that have 120 tackles. <laughs> find me that it's not a lot. Nah. As long as we can get a guy at about 80 to 110. How, how many games do we have a linebacker that had 10 tackles? Uh, probably zero. Like, how many games did a linebacker hit 10 tackles in a game? Uh, I could tell you how many the most Corey Flagg had in a game. That was yeah. eight. Eight. He had eight, and, and, Wayman, sure. and Wayman Steed had eight as well. How many tackles did uh, Sewell have last year? He said 77. No, he didn't. Your stack guy is, is is very wrong. He sounds wrong. He had 114. 114. You're wrong. He had 114. <laughs> so we're talking about arguably the best linebacker in all of college football had 114. Right. So, yeah. Um, if we can get to 90, 80 to 100, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, anyways. That's one linebacker. Another linebacker I wanted to touch on. This is an interesting one. Um, very interesting one to me, right? Lorenzo McGaskill. Uh, he played at Louisiana with Billy Napier last year. Hit the portal Ooh. months ago. Hasn't committed to Florida. I wonder why. Um, maybe he had to pass classes or something like that to get into Florida. Who knows? Um, he had 83 tackles last year and 84 tackles this past season. So he's had two years in a row with over 80 tackles. Um, I'm just curious as to why he hasn't committed to Florida if he's going to go there. Um, so another guy that's been in the portal for a while has kind of been slept on. Um, but I think he would be a massive addition to this team. Yeah, so. you never know, man. Maybe for some reason, for some odd reason, you know, Billy Napier probably like, I, I don't want him. I think I could do better now that I'm at Florida. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, Billy's weird too, and we and we'll take him and he go for ninety tackles, and then Billy be kicking himself in the tail, wishing he would have kept him. Yep. And then the last position, Black, and this there's going to be a hybrid here. 
actually two hybrids. <laughs> you got Jonah Miller, six foot seven, Oregon tackle, and Derek Hunter, six foot four, three hundred plus pound, Texas A and M offensive tackle. Take both them of them. Take listen, them both. Listen though, both of them played nose tackle. Hmm. They they both they played offensive line in college and nose tackle in college. Both of them. Mm. And the one from Oregon, of course, this staff knows knows that individual very well. Yeah, pretty 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 well. Um, so to me, I think they're both takes. Um, add competition to that room. I, I think Derek Hunter could be a, a potential nose tackle. He, he's more of a defensive guy. Played mostly defense in um, in high school. Uh, Mr. Rostaman knows knows him very very well. May, okay. may or may not have seen him about two weeks ago. Um, and uh, Jonah Miller was recruited to Oregon by Mario and Mirabal tackle. So I, I would assume he stays there. The other question that I'm sure is going to get asked right now is what about Jalen Jeffers, the other tackle from Oregon? He committed to UCLA um, this past week. So he's right. off the, he's off the table. Um, I think that it would be very, very smart if we were to take Jordan or Jonah Miller. He's got prototypical tackle size at six foot seven. He's got to put on a little bit of weight, um, but I'm not worried about that at all. I think he could compete for that right tackle spot. I mean, look, don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> we got help coming from the Pacific Northwest, okay? Yeah, okay, buddy. You, you haven't said it today, so you had to do it on the show, huh? You know, we got, we got help coming from the Pacific Northwest. Just everybody relax, okay? <laughs> In my Aaron Rodgers voice, relax. Yeah, the guy that's not in the portal is coming, right? Relax. Um, so we did get a question here about Isaiah Land, the edge <laughs> rusher, um, from Florida A and M by our guy Sigmund. Yeah, I think uh, George is on him hot right now. Um, he's another guy that's got to put on weight. He's like two hundred ten pounds, real thin. Ooh. Um, but he had like. 19 sacks last year for FAMU. Um, so another guy maybe to keep an eye on. Uh, we we do need a pass rush specialist, in my opinion, still. Um, so that, that that kid's solid. Very, very solid. So definitely keep an eye on him as well. Um, and then lastly, Black, confirmed players that are leaving. Um, and this is since Mario took over December 6th of this past year. We've got nine confirmed players leaving, one of them announcing late. Um, Cameron Williams was no longer a part of the team last year, but he just announced now um, that he's entering the transfer portal. So that's the first one. You've got the specialist, Camden Price, who was our backup kicker, and Nelson mm -hmm. Foley, who was our backup punter. And then on offense, you've got Dazzlin Warsham, Cody Brown, and Larry Hodges on offense and on defense, you've got Deshaun Troutman, Tyreek Austin cave and Nesta Silvera that have left since Mario's taken over. So that's nine players since Mario has been here. Um, I'm a little bit shocked to be completely honest with you, black. I expected it to be 12 to 15. Um, mm -hmm. but something important to note, there is still a, a, a chance that more guys enter the portal. Right. Um, right. they will, they will red shirt, a lot of these guys aren't likely to contribute this year anyway. So they, they would redshirt and then transfer out, um, whether it be in the summertime, in fall camp, or during the season. Right. Uh, definitely still expect more players to, to depart the program. There's been a lot of smoke about this name, Tyler Johnson. Uh, a lot of a lot of smoke about Isaiah Walker um, and Sam Brooks, you know, potentially medically retiring. However, none of those players have – confirmed in the portal um there was a report that they were leaving the program um but none of that has has come to fruition yet um you might start to see some more names trickle in this week um because you can you put in your paperwork to the transfer portal um but it's pretty much up to you when you want to announce it um or not. Sometimes a journalist will literally look in the portal that has access to it and just post it. Um, but not everybody announces right away. So there is still potential that more guys transfer out that have already told the school it's just not public yet. And you might just see some more names start trickling in this week. Um, 
How do you feel about that number, Black? Are you a little bit surprised that it's only at nine? Um, yeah. Yes and no. Yes and no. But more so on the yes side, I was expecting a little more. But, I mean, things can happen tomorrow, next week, a month from now, right before camp starts. So, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get to a couple questions in the chat. Um, so go ahead and throw some questions in the chat before we get on out of here. We'll answer some of the, the questions. Um, and then uh, we will be out of here, Black. Yeah. What what questions we got in the chat? We got 220 people still in the chat. I know you guys got questions. Um, we got Ian with Portal Edition. Some kids have to be on the way out. We're definitely above. I think we're actually at. 85 currently like literally on the dot um but it's it's so hard to track there's guys that are on scholarship not on scholarship that are practice squad guys that you just uh <laughs> it's hard to know exactly uh, i wish the school just published it um but unfortunately they don't any updates on wesley no uh, there was a lot of fake reports that came out this past week. I can tell you that for a fact. I got like a text message that said one thing, and then five minutes later, it had changed to something else that was less significant. Then another five minutes passed, and it was even less significant. And then it became what was reported that he just had a laceration on his foot and needed stitches. I don't know what the truth is. <laughs> I heard he's fine from a from a solid source, um, so I'm not worried about the uh the injury to wesley at all right now um so the draft's over for the seahawks right so if he is joining the team now would be the time um but do you have any information on that black none i haven't none. heard i haven't heard a word about zo in in a while so um that's just a wait and see i'll tell you this though uh, robert he's still helping us out regardless of if he's on the staff or not he's still helping us out um, in a more analytical role and, and just kind of making things happen um, as far as relationships go. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, just a few. <laughs> just a few. We got a guy, Cliff. Mr. Cliff, man, who's the next portal guy we get and who's the next high school commit? Thanks, guys. Good show. Go Canes. Uh, next portal guy we get. Let me look at the list of the guys that we just talked about. I'm going to say it's going to be one of them receivers. Maybe the guy from Missouri. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go one of the receivers. I don't know which one it is going to be yet. Um and then as far as high school goes, next commit, we got Joshua asking the question, Cliff asking the question. Um, so next commit, I'm going to go Emory, Emory Williams, the quarterback from Milton, Florida. I agree with that. I, I can go with that. I know he really likes Frank Pond or, and or, Miami. Or Cliff, I'm going to say, whichever one Davis's mom get to first, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, they're underage, but you can't, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're underage. Oh, you're right. Well, well, I'll take theirs then. <laughs> <laughs> we got our guy, Mr. Coach Hayes, football in the building. What's up, fellas in chat? Keep grinding. Hey, we appreciate you, Coach Hayes. Coach love Hayes, what's happening, brother? Love seeing you on the show on Sunday. Uh, I love that you got to have a conversation with your man, Chase Smith, finally. Um, that was awesome to watch. So we appreciate the support and everybody make sure you guys are checking out coach Hayes. He's the best. Um, real question. Would you take Landers over Addison? Uh, no, unless <laughs> it, it requires 5 million to get Addison. <laughs> right. Right. I, 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 look, I ain't with paying all that cream. So if that number is true, then I, I'll take Landers and be happy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, Chase Smith, your guy right there. And then the last question we're going to get to our guy, Ian. If we take Emory, do you feel, still think we look for another quarterback in this class? I think we still recruit um, Rashada and Dante Moore, uh, personally. Um, just because they're, you know, they're good. 
Um, they're elite. They're elite. But I don't. I don't know. I I think they would still recruit quarterback. Um, but it would definitely be interesting. Is this quarterback uh, hands down not even close? Uh, no disrespect to Peyton Matoka, but uh, just go turn on this tape. I'll post it. Um, I will post it in the chat so you guys can watch this tape just because it needs to be done. Excuse me. Let me do that. Where are we at? Where the hell is Alex at? I ain't seen him up in here. He was here earlier. That's all I'm in here. That's his tape. Check him out. I'm telling you, that kid is the goods. Uh, I need Coach Hayes to break him down, actually, if you're still in here. So, um, anyways, by any any other comments uh, today other than uh, your quote of the day? We got to get a quote of the day from you, A Black. Um, I don't really have anything, you know, but um, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Damn, it's like that, Black. It's real simple. I don't even I didn't even think of it so just now. So um because you know it's real simple, man. I'm gonna go with a quote from uh from Alex Smith, the quarterback. Embrace the new no matter how uncomfortable and make it work for you. I think that's very important for a lot of these guys um that are coming into a, a new situation. They've got to uh, embrace the change no matter how how uncomfortable it is. So Mario's bringing in a new system, a new culture, and these guys either got to embrace it or get the hell out. Yeah, um, it's so time to win. It's time that, to win. Time to win, win big, win often, and win consistently. Yep. <laughs> so that's my quote of the day, Mr. Black. We appreciate everybody that tuned in today. We hovered around 200 all night. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow to the Canes Insight Live Show, Six Rings Canes. And you got Thursday with Sebastian Lane. You got the Goats on Sunday, Coach Hayes and Flo. And then Monday, you got Mr. Wholesome One. Shout out to Wholesome One. I'm trying to get him on the show here soon. He's been real busy. Um, and we will see you guys next week. Take care. Go Canes. <laughs>